might bring it out because I want to give it a little bit more crisp coffin at the edge shaping as I'm working about one credit card thickness is all you need this is about a medium long okay medium long to long it's not even XL so I'm gonna shape my brush make sure I get that crisp shape already so later on I don't have to do that much shaping Did I forget the thumb of the primer? No, I got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah. No, I got it. <laughs> you just scared me, girl. But that's okay, because I have good cuticle work. So even if I didn't have primer on it, it'll still stay on, right? <laughs> We're good looking out. Get my powder up to the cuticle as flush as I possibly can. I don't need that much because I don't want to overflow it. And I'll blend the nail in myself structure here. Oh, it's still just a little bit warm today, so it's gonna seal up a little bit quicker, but that's quite okay. So about that structure, I think I'm missing a little bit of powder because I had too much there, but add a little bit more on the tip here in the transition. Right here. Make sure I get that good transition there. It's a little bit too much of a dip, so I'm gonna make up for that. I think that's because I, I didn't do too much. I didn't do enough powder in the first bead. Second bead, a little bit too much powder, so I get my ratio down a little bit better. Other than that, I have one nail done. So I'm just gonna get a little bit more powder, a little bit more monomer, a little bit warm in here. So a bigger bead here. work this powder. Now my monomer works with any powder. It, just, it gives it like a medium consistency. You see how it's not running? But if I work my brush, I'm able to just mold it how I want it. This is important because this is about an al dente state. This is when you can sculpt the actual powder to make it more crisp. And a lot of times, yes, the tip has the shape, but when you use that brush and you sculpt it, it gives it a very nice crisp shape, okay? Saves you a lot of time later to do with a hand filer and all that stuff. See, I'm gonna make it nice and crisp. Shaping with my acrylic brush first. There you go, pinch up any excess. Get my shape shapes nice and crisp. This means that later on, I'm just gonna run a hand filer 100 by 100 grit over it, and it'll be nice and precise. Tracy this length seems crazy long for UK clients really this is actually short coming over here in the United States this is a very short length um, this is like a medium to medium long but depending on, but depending on your clientele also you know you never know I mean your clientele uh, you never know the location this length may be considered long for some other people But here in the United States, this is pretty average length for people that get designs and stuff like that. It's actually a, a bare minimum. If, you, if you're here in the United States and you want to get designs, all those fancy nails, you, this is like a bare minimum length you have to do. People don't realize that. Well, people are starting to realize that now. It gives us more surface area, more canvas to be able to work. You can't, you can't force a nail tech to do all these designs on nothing, you know? You appreciate your clients on the west side sometimes? You never know. Usually that when you're in the area where a lot of clients don't do long nails, there's always a few that does them, but not a lot of nail techs would do them. You can scoop them all up. If you come out to like my area where everybody does long nails, you have a lot of competition. Every nail tech does like long nails, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of competition, okay? So if you're in an area where the, your, your clientele is mainly shorter nails, there's a long nail clientele out there. It may be smaller, but there's not a lot of competition, so you should be able to break them all up, truly. On the 16, I have a lot of control over this. This is where the apex is, lay my bead. You notice how I nudge that cuticle up? 
the powder up to the cuticle area. I don't lay the powder on the cuticle area because I don't want it to bleed all over there. If I nudge it up, I have more control of it. So there's no bleeding, if there's any issues with the powder, I'll be able to clean up my brush. It's a nice crimp brush though. So. Slightly tap, flush the cuticle down because I don't have to do too much work later. Before you know it, you got three nails done. I probably could one bead this. This, is, this length is probably short enough for me to one bead. Get the cuticles. Shit, my nail. Right. It takes about the same amount of time if I did one bead compared to two beads. Just two beads, you have more control for those guys that <clears throat> need more time to work with the product. One bead is nice, but like I said, you have to worry about two, a lot of steps at the same time. A lot of you guys want to work a little bit less, you know, headache. Just do two beating, split that bead into two. The one beating does definitely let you gauge your ability to understand the powder their timing and everything. So definitely is a, a good is a good way to test your your abilities to do application at a higher level. As you get better, more understanding of the powder, you'll be able to do more and more of um, one beating because you'll be able to understand how long it takes the powder to dry. Use the thumb, I have to come back up for some little bit of apex. Thumb is a big nail, so we gotta make sure that we get a Good apex on there in case the plant is a little bit messy with our nails. A little bit of a baby bump. Like I said, this is a medium length, so you don't really need that much. Just nice, clean application. Generally, I would recommend an application like this be finished within less than an hour. Um, application shaping and filing it should be done in less than an hour. That's the ideal goal for any nail tech. So you have more time to do designs. So you don't get yourself into that, what, two hour mark, three hour mark. So it's still wet, I can't mold it. I gotta let it dry a little bit. Two point five hours this means that you're either doing too much or you're you're not prioritizing uh your time correctly. So you're doing like steps oh I think a lot of nail techs repeat steps over and over by accident. They you don't realize it. Or you're just too comfortable to sit there and you're talking to your client, hanging out while you're working. That's that's the main consensus for the a lot of stay home nail techs. Um you guys you don't have anything booked for that day or you have one client that day or one, they're like hours in between so you can sit there and just chill talk and hang out kind of but <clears throat> you gotta understand now they're there to get their nails done as a business you can still talk to them but don't have to get in all the four and one gotta make your money because you gotta pay yourself by hour okay a lot of 
Uh, you probably like, yep, that's me. I'm sitting there and I'm talking way too much. Well, I should be working. Yep. It's okay. You can let the client spill the tea. You just don't got to refill the cup every time they spill it. Don't take offense when I say that, because that's true. You probably spend like at least 20 minutes talking to your clients while you're working. You can still work, talk, respond, and still be able to get your timing down, okay? Yeah, but two and a half hours. I think that's an average for nail techs down in this industry. I want to push nail tech under an hour and a half. That's such a good goal for a lot of you guys, trying to get under an hour and a half. Application, no matter how long, how short. If it's shorter, yes, you're going to be able to do it quicker. But even the longest length, you should be able to be done in less than an hour. Application, that's application shaping and everything, okay? All of that. Even me, I'm actually slower when I'm doing live stream. So I have to make up for that timing. We have to do everything quicker. And other, I don't do that much shaping. Shaping is actually one of my fastest things I do. So that's blessed with that. But I guess spend about 20, 30 minutes shaping. Oh, that's way too long. 15 minutes for our max for shaping. Remember, the more you shape, the actually the worse the shape gets. You can you, there's a, there's a thing called overfiling too, where you can change the shape by accident. It happens all the time. It happens to me. So it definitely happened to you, where you're sitting there, you shape, 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 and all of a sudden you know your shape's not the same shape that you originally wanted anymore, because you technically removed it all, and you can't go back from that. Once you overfile, you can't come back from that. Keep in mind, shaping is actually a touch sensitive thing. You only shape so much before it starts to have effect. Let me see if we get a huge bead here for this. So I definitely need a lot of powder. Use the brush to brush the powder in, okay, guys? So it comes down evenly. 
the same amount, same thickness. So I, have, I wait for the powder to get to the level where it can do that. If I let it run too much, it's gonna be uneven as it moves down, so I have uneven thickness to my nail. Then later I gotta drill, do all this extra work. But this gives me the ability to brush the powder in, get a nice even thickness, so I don't have to do too much work later when it comes to drilling and filing and all that. Cutting down my timing through application. And there we go, we should be finished application in about 15, that's probably 18 minutes. I'm at the 18 minute mark, if not 13. Clean my brush, make sure flicker through everything's out you'll have some acrylic residue no matter how good your brush is there is some acrylic residue in the brush so it's good to know how to clean it when you flip through the brush like this you can feel anything inside if there's still any sticky 